Item number, SCP-970. Object class, Usulid. Special Containment Procedures. All sites affected by SCP-970 are to be acquired by the Foundation, with a suitable cover established. Civilians attempting to enter the site are to be discouraged, preferably within the boundaries of local law. Trespassers are to be administered a Class A amnesiac. In light of Experiment 04 and Addendum 970-02, armed personnel are to be stationed by entries into affected sites. Description. SCP-970 is a spatial phenomenon wherein a collection of rooms are looped on themselves. In all cases found, this is by means of a series of doors appearing in the walls, all in a straight line, such that it is possible to walk forwards and end up at the starting position. The alteration to the rooms does not affect neighboring rooms and floors. There is as of yet no known explanation for the appearance of this phenomenon. SCP-970-01 is a cell block within Sector 19, and the first example of the SCP-970 phenomenon encountered by the Foundation. It was constructed with the intent of housing Class D personnel, and fulfilled that purpose until, date blanked out, when several lead classes breached containment in an escape attempt. The investigation into the incident led to the discovery that a series of doors had appeared in the cell block, leading into rooms on the opposite side of the corridor. It was quickly established that the layout of the building did not support this addition, and that the rooms were following a non-standard geometry. Since the incident, blank, further such examples of the phenomenon have been discovered, with, blank, percent of those in an 800 kilometer radius of Sector 19. One notable example was found within the western wing of the, redacted, Legislative Palace. In this instance, the Foundation was unable to acquire the affected site, and local authorities proved intractable and hostile when recommendations on security were made. The matter was resolved six months later, in a violent coup which saw the destruction of the building, resulting in data expunged, was eventually contained by Mobile Task Forces Row 8 and Pi 1, supported by the Rebel Forces. Addendum 970-01, Experimentation Logs for SCP-970. Experiment 01. D-970-294 was given a head-mounted camera and instructed to walk through the doors of SCP-970-01. Subject expressed doubts as to the possibility of the phenomenon, but followed orders. Subject successfully navigated the rooms, expressing alarm and surprise to discover himself at his starting point. Video footage and internal measuring devices showed that the subject did not deviate noticeably from a straight line, but nevertheless emerged on the other side of the corridor. The anomaly is confirmed. This experiment was intended to provide a baseline for comparison with other experiments, though, given the single property of the phenomenon, I am unsure as to how we will be able to test it, Dr. John. Experiment 02. D-970295 was instructed to repeat the above instructions for as long as he felt able. Water and food were made available, and the subject was told that he was to stop only when either instructed to, or upon reaching exhaustion. Subject showed a normal appetite for the exertion, and continued for 205 iterations, whereupon the subject reacted with confusion on fetching his water. He claimed that researcher Taylor had previously had black hair, whereas she now had blonde hair. At no point during the experiment had Taylor dyed her hair, and colleagues claimed that she has had the same hair color for nine months. Taylor admitted that she had considered coloring her hair black the previous night, but chose not to. Examination of the subject's recording indeed showed Taylor with black hair until the 205th iteration. On further examination, other small differences between iterations were noted. The experiment was called to an immediate end. I take it back. Further testing is necessary. Dr. John. Experiment 03. D970296 was given a chipped card containing the following items of data. A 16-bit pseudo-random number, called Datum A, the final score of a football match that finished 20 minutes before the experiment began, called Datum B, the morning's Dow Jones Index, called Datum C, and a 5-day weather forecast for the continental United States from two days before, called Datum D. A scanner was erected by the west door to record the data as the subject walked through. D970296 was once again instructed to repeat the instructions of Experiment 01 for as long as he felt able. Datum A diverged from its original value after the first iteration, as expected. Datum B first diverged from its original value after 24 iterations, with the range of deviation extending with successive iterations. Here the experiment was paused briefly. It is recommended for future researchers that they ensure none of their colleagues have an emotional investment in the match. At 76 iterations, the first unpredicted event occurred. This iteration of the card featured a lengthy note 
in addition to the data presented, and an alternative definition of data B, the score of a women's basketball game. Researcher Taylor had previously suggested this for data B, but had been overruled by Dr. Jung. See above note on emotional investment. The iteration of D970296, present at the tie-in, did not wish to comment further on the incident, as he had been similarly interrogated for ten successive iterations until a previous Dr. Jung put the note on the card. The scanner was reprogrammed to add notes to the end of each card. Note from Research Assistant Boston. Dr. Jung initially encountered technical problems with the scanner, prompting researcher Taylor to go and fetch someone who knows what he's doing, at which point she walked through the door to the previous iteration, returning with a second Dr. Jung. The original Dr. Jung proved unwilling to be assisted, leading to a row between the two doctors, which was only exacerbated when a third Dr. Jung emerged from the next iteration, complaining about the slow pace of the experiment. The disagreement was eventually broken up by security, who mandated a the reprogramming of the scanner by the second Dr. Jung, and b that all staff remain in their particular iteration to avoid confusion. At 157 iterations, an unidentified man appeared in the place of D970296. The man was immediately restrained according to security procedures. Analysis of the notes on his card indicated that he was, in fact, D970296, and that in his original iteration, a different D-class had been allocated to the experiment. D970296-1, as he will now be known, showed signs of bruising, allegedly from multiple enthusiastic restraints during this experiment. Dr. Jung provided a cardboard sign to hang around his neck, reading, I am authorized to be here, please read the notes. D970296-1 showed gratitude. Datum C first diverged from its original value after 234 iterations. Datum D did not diverge within the span of the experiment, 371 iterations. This experiment establishes that as the number of iterations increases, the point of divergence from our own iteration lies further in the past. It also shows the wisdom in planning any experiment involving SCP-970-01 sometime in advance, to ensure that all nearby iterations are working from the same basis. In addition to this, the incident noted by research assistant Boston shows that neighboring iterations remain consistent throughout the period of interaction. Dr. Chung. Experiment 04. A robotic probe was programmed to recognize and open the doors of SCP-970-01 and fitted with a camera. Recharging facilities were made available in the corridor to be automatically accessed when the probe was under 5% charge. The camera was fitted with a redacted locking chip, resonating with the computer within the corridor in the first iteration. This experiment differs from Experiment 2 as it intends to relay information to the first iteration, whereas Experiment 2 passed information down to further iterations. The film displayed approximately 600 hours worth of footage, approximating to redacted iterations. Analysis of the recording has shown the following iterations to be of note. Iteration 213, the first immediately noticeable difference. Dr. Jung is wearing a red tie. Iteration 704, researcher Taylor is absent and does not appear again until iteration 1061. Researcher Taylor reappears, but her identity pass declares her a doctor. Iteration redacted, the research team appear to be under attack. Dr. Jung has been shot in the chest. Iteration redacted. The research team have disappeared. The wall is covered in blood. The following symbols can be seen in the blood. Data expunged. Iteration redacted. The research team, data expunged, facial features. I do not believe that anything can be established by further experimentation. Dr. Jung. Addendum 970-02. Following a nervous breakdown, researcher Taylor has been admitted to the psychiatric ward. Other members of the research team have undergone similar, though less severe, reactions. The footage from Experiment 04 is believed to be the cause of the problems, and all affected personnel have been administered Class B amnesiacs as part of their treatment. Experimentation on SCP-970 has been ceased for the immediate future, and the security on affected sites has been upgraded.